All right, so this is gonna be a bit of a different video, but I'm noticing this is still kind of an issue when it comes to the versus debating. And really there are two things that I wanna talk about, but I'm gonna be splitting them into two different videos, just kind of for ease of access for you guys. So like, if you wanna watch the dimensionality video, you can watch this one. And if you wanna watch the speed video, you can watch the other one. So that way they're a bit more concise and not as bulky. And you gotta like scroll through the entire video every single time. But I'm noticing that the issue in versus debating is still there where people exactly don't know what higher dimensionality is and what it entails and what it even means. And you know, the same thing goes for speed as well. Like once you start getting to higher levels of speed and you have to start tweaking the speed formula or just abandoning it outright, people don't really know what that means. So I'm gonna do my best, you know, put on my math teacher glasses, put on my blazer and try to explain as simple and easy as I can what both of these topics are. So that way you should know what it is going forward. And in my opinion, it's really easy. I really don't think it's all that complex at all. So hopefully this helps a lot of you guys out. I was just kind of sitting around at the gym thinking this, I don't know why this came at the gym, but I was like, man, people really need to know what dimensionality means. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. And you know, maybe if there's other topics outside of dimensionality and then speed that you guys are also confused on, I would love to go touch up on those as well. The smarter and more well-informed the debate community gets, the better the debates are. And I would love to have better debates, dude. So hopefully this helps out in that endeavor. But before we begin, if you guys enjoy my type of content, which is, you know, just a lot of power scaling stuff, it's pretty much bleach power scaling and then like the OP solo your favorite verse type characters, you know, people like Gilgamesh from Fate, Sinbad from Magi, and surprisingly a lot of the Yu-Gi-Oh characters, which is what I'm talking about now currently, they're kind of taking over the channel. So if that kind of interests you, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe on the channel. If you're absolutely thirsting and just absolutely dying for more content because I'm just not giving you enough, then you can click that join button to become a channel member and that actually gives you access to debates or I've actually debated on this topic of dimensionality before ironically enough and also past live streams as well. But if you're still not full on Bleach Hub content, well, I got two more avenues for you. I got a second channel down in the description down below, although that's more related to Fate Grand Order, but that is more content for you to consume. And then there's also my Twitch where I stream on weekdays. Well, most every weekday. Your boy is a college student and does have a pretty decent social life, so I'm trying to maintain that. And sometimes, you know, I just get a little bit too tired and can't stream that day. But with all that being said, let me try to explain dimensionality to people in a simple and concise manner. So first and foremost, what do people mean when they talk about dimensionality and higher dimensions? And what is a dimension, right? Confusing questions, I'm sure. Well, first and foremost, like, let's say you're reading a story and they say, we're going to go to another dimension. Does that mean they're going to a higher dimension? Probably not. You got to understand the context of a lot of scenes. Dimension is also used to just mean like another plane of reality, right? Like it can just be almost seen as another room in the house, right? Or maybe a different house in the neighborhood, even in that. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like a higher dimensional plane, like a higher spatial dimension. So that's the first thing that you have to understand is that you got to read the context of the situation and make sure that the characters are actually talking about higher or lower dimensions and not just another place in the same space time, which is usually pretty easy to understand. Usually authors are pretty blatant when they're talking about higher dimensions. You can kind of debate goon some intention sometimes, but it is very, very obvious when an author wants their character to be a higher dimensional being, as it's usually reinforced a number of times in the series. It's usually a big main central point. For instance, I would say a series like Tu Aru or a certain magical index as some of you guys might know, it has a much more blatant claim to having higher dimensional feats than a verse like Bleach does. Because in Bleach, you kind of have to debate Goon a lot of that stuff because it's really not the intended purpose that Kubo is going for, but in Tuaru, I mean, half the cast are higher dimensional beings and they come from higher dimensions and they blatantly reference a lot of the different theories for higher dimensions. So one of the two probably has a higher claim to saying that they actually are using legitimate higher dimensions, whereas the other one, you can maybe argue it, you can maybe debate Goon it a little bit, but it's probably not the intended purpose. So first and foremost, let's get the context down correctly. But second of all, what are dimensions? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me bring you back to your high school geometry class, all right? 
And let's just explain the basic fundamentals of what dimensions are. So first and foremost, we got ourselves the zero dimension, right? Or a dot, because there's nothing else to it. It's pretty much like the most simple thing you can get aside from just nothing being on the page as a demonstration, right? So your dot is your zero dimensions. It has absolutely nothing going on. Then we move to one dimension. So we add another dot in this analogy and bada boom, bada bing, you've added the dimension of length, right? So now you've got a line and that's pretty awesome. But we can actually go higher to the second dimension where the next dimension that we add is another line. So essentially we double the 1D to get a 2D and this creates, oh my goodness, a square that has length and width. So now we have two dimensions, but hold on to your pants boys because we're about to go to the third dimension. And this is gonna be a little hard to explain. So you're gonna have to use your imagination a little bit, but imagine you have that two dimensional square, right? And imagine you put your hand on that square and you pushed it forward. The shape you would get for doing such an action would create a three dimensional cube because essentially the third dimension is adding depth to our two dimensional square. And that's how you get a cube. And unfortunately it's hard to actually explain everything higher than 3D because we live in the third dimension. So now you actually literally have to use your imagination. I can throw up some videos that are supposed to illustrate what a four dimensional object would look like to us, but we actually can't know what it would look like because we only perceive things in three dimensions. And so the next dimension that we would add to a three dimensional object is not known to us, but we can visualize it or we can at least visualize the idea of it because we know from the previous dimensions and studying how we got from zero to three, what it would be like to go from three to four, four to five, five to six, six to seven, and so on because all you're doing is essentially adding a new dimension to each object. And you could also say that you're maybe doubling something from every dimension, right? How from the zero dimension to one dimension, you double the dots. From one to two, you double the lines. From two to three, you double the squares. And then three to four, you would double the cubes. That's another interpretation or way to visualize going into higher dimensions. But how does this apply to versus debating? Well, essentially how this is used in versus debating is that a higher dimension can interact with lower dimensions, but lower dimensions cannot interact with higher dimensions. There are many illustrations of what it would look like for say a two dimensional being to see a three dimensional object or how a four dimensional object would look to us as 3D beings. We wouldn't see the entirety of the object. We would only basically see a piece of it as we could only perceive it as 3D. We wouldn't be able to perceive the fourth dimension of said object. And so this is where this essentially comes in in fiction and where it comes in in versus debating. So basically, when people talk about beings being higher, they essentially mean that they're a higher tier being, right? Like that's kind of all that that means, like in the simplest way. Again, any mathematicians in the comments down below, please do not be molding right now because I'm trying to explain this to people <laughs> in the most simple way that I possibly can, especially because math doesn't really take into account the versus debating aspect. Like there's not really scientists being like, oh yeah, so this means that Superman as a 4D being would just punch up Goku or something, right? Like there's nobody actually doing that. They're looking at it as a more mathematical sense. And then we're trying to take that and apply it to versus logic. And essentially what we have is that a higher dimensional being would not have to be infinitely greater than the lower dimensional being, but more than infinitely greater. And one of the best ways to visualize this is with cosmology. So imagine for a second, our infinite universe, it has infinite three dimensional mass, infinite three dimensional space. However, if it is an infinite 3D space, it cannot be contained by a 3D object because that 3D object that would have to contain that infinite 3D space would not be large enough. It's essentially like trying to take a box that's the same size as another box and fit it into that box if you want to visualize it that way. So what do we need? We need a bigger box and that bigger box is the four dimensional construct. And that's generally how people view the construct that holds our universe together. We understand that, okay, if we have an infinite three dimensional space, we need something that's more than infinitely larger than the three dimensional space to contain it. And that's a four dimensional structure or construct. And it simply just keeps going higher and higher from that. And that's kind of how you get the cosmology of multiverses and higher and higher universal levels, because then we can have an infinite amount of four dimensional constructs or infinite universes, but something has to be able to be large enough to contain all of those infinite 4D constructs. 
So that's where you get a 5D construct known as the multiverse. And then you get groups of multiverses, you get complex multiverses, you get hyperverses, and that just keeps going up by a more than infinite amount every single time. So I hope I was able to explain this in a very simple way. It's a bit harder to explain dimensions than it is speed, which is gonna be a very easy video because the speed formula is literally just speed equals distance divided by time. And higher dimensions and higher levels of speed are just messing with that formula in different ways. So that should be a bit easier, but I hope this helped a lot of you guys out and kind of helps you understand where all of this comes from in versus debating and how higher dimensions work. Again, there's a lot more that we kind of could get into, but that'd be more of an advanced class. And this really covers all of the things you need to know. Like after you know all of this, you pretty much have the basics down and it gives you everything you need to kind of figure the rest of everything else out. So hopefully this helped. Hopefully I do not see any dumb, dumb dummies now in the comments or in debates misunderstanding or misrepresenting dimensions because this is the most simple way you can apply it in versus debating. There are various theories for dimensions that have been developed, but those usually don't apply unless the verse is specifically saying that they're going to be using that dimensional theory. So I wouldn't worry about that too much because again, verse needs to specifically list out that they're using that. Otherwise, just default to using this as the explanation for dimensions in versus debating. Also, if somebody tries to tell you that time is the fourth dimension or something, you'll know that they're a big dumb dummy because there are two different types of dimensions. In versus debating, we use spatial dimensions to determine how strong people are. Temporal dimensions are more for speed, which we'll talk about in the next video or whenever I upload this speed video, actually. But if someone tries to tell you that time is the fourth dimension, you can point and laugh at them. I know there's specific verses that do use time as the fourth dimension. Again, refer to the thing that I was just talking about, where if a verse specifically lists, this is how the dimensions work then you follow those rules. But otherwise, this is your default. With that being said, I think I covered everything. Again, hope this helped you guys out a lot. And with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace, late guys.